Hello students, this is Brox Gags, and I'm going to make this video discussing kinematic diagrams and the calculation of the mobility for simple planar mechanisms. And so the example we have here is the caterpillar excavator arm. And so I took a picture of this caterpillar excavator uh, about a year ago when it was on campus. A uh, fairly complex machine as a whole, but we're not going to be analyzing the entire machine. We're just going to be looking at the arm. And more specifically, we're wanting to draw the kinematic diagram of that arm, as well as calculate the mobility for the, the mechanism itself. And so uh, that is the task we have before us. And so I'll slide down a little bit here. Uh, first thing I like to do when I start to draw my kinematic diagrams is to decide on the frame link. And so the frame is a lot of times a motionless part of the mechanism from which we can observe the motion of all the other links itself here. And so for this specific example, the frame is going to be the body of the excavator itself. And so you've got the tracks, and then you've got this body, and then the arm extends off the body itself. And so that body is going to be our frame link for the mechanism that we're describing, which is the, the arm portion of it. And so how does the arm connect into the, the frame should be the next question. And so the fr frame has a couple pin connections. We've got a pin connection here, or more appropriately a pin joint here. And then we also have some pin joints down here as well. And so uh, those connection points or joints are how the kinematic diagram is going to start. And so what I will do is just draw a couple fixed pin connections or joints to illustrate those t connection points. And so there will be one. I'll come down here a little bit and have my second one. And so that should get us started for the diagram. And so one thing you might be asking, hey, you've only drawn two pin connections or joints, and there's actually three here. There's one here and one here and one here. Well, for um, our studies in the MECT 420 class, at this point we're only looking at planar mechanisms. So really the fact that there are two hydraulic cylinders, one on each side of the arm itself here, is not really going to affect the overall motion that we'd be studying here. And so we can compress that into just one cylinder. Uh, think of it also as it might not work for other reasons in the design, uh, but I could replace those two cylinders and put one cylinder right in the middle and have it actuate this link here and I would achieve the same motion. And so now that we have got the pin connections or pin joints with the frame uh, figured out, um, we then work away from the, the frame and draw in our other links for the mechanism. And so the first link that catches my eye is this larger link right here. Uh, it's somewhat bent in shape. And it's got connection points with these hydraulic cylinders. Um, one here on the lower side, one on the upper side, and it's also got the, the CAT logo in there. And so I'll go ahead and draw a very simplified sketch to, of it. And so we look at it, it's going to be connected into the top pin joint. And so I'll zoom in here and draw a, a very rough sketch of that link. And so there's the outline of the link itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use gray too shade in a little bit here as well. That way we're clearly defining, hey, this is one rigid body. This is going to be one link for our mechanism. And so uh, there's the body of it. We've also got a few pin connections on it as well. And so first one we have is at the bottom. And so we've got it connecting here with the hydraulic cylinder. And so I'll place that now. I've got a pin connection right in this region. And then I've got to place the hydraulic cylinder in here. Uh, remember, we represent hydraulic cylinder as a combination of two simple links. You've got the one simple link that I've drawn here, just the line, which can represent the cylinder body. And then I've got a slider that's going to slide along that link there uh, to represent the piston and rod that's going to be sliding relative to the body itself there. And so that combination is how we take care of the cylinder here. Then we've got a pin connection also at the, the far right end as well. And so just darken circle here will represent that pin connection. And so that's 
the majority of this length will still have to come back and take care of the hydraulic cylinder on the top. Uh, but let's move now to the next link here on the far right hand side. It's pretty closely oriented to vertical in this uh, configuration of the mechanism. And so here we've got a pin connection, a pin connection. We come out here, we have got a pin connection right here for this hydraulic cylinder. Uh, we come down, there's going to be a pin connection here for this length, and then finally a pin connection down here where it connects into the bucket. And so I'll make a, a simple sketch of that. So I know it comes up here, there's going to be a pin connection at this point, it's going to come over a little bit, and then it's going to basically come down here to a point, and so, I guess forgive my somewhat crude drawing, but it'll come down something like this and have a pin connection right here with the joint. Here, since it is a somewhat complex link here, um, I'll go ahead and use the, the shading in order to Make sure that I always remember this is one rigid body and one link for us. And so now we can put in the links and joints associated with the hydraulic cylinder on the top here. And so I've got this pin connection here. I've got the simple link here we're just representing as a line. So from here, there's my line, there's my slider. And so that takes care of the hydraulic cylinder on top. Next, uh, let's go ahead and draw in the bucket here at the bottom. And so the bucket is going to be somewhere down here. And so there's a very rough drawing of the bucket itself. Now the reason I kind of flesh this out is uh, one thing that might be a goal of this analysis is to determine the endpoint of the bucket itself here. And so a very likely point of interest for us would be this point right here. And so I'll just go ahead and illustrate that as, hey, this would possibly be a point of interest. We might be interested in asking questions such as, if these three cylinders have three different lengths, what is the corresponding point location for this point here? And so we set up some um, XY coordinate system. We pick our origin place. And so then if we start playing with the lengths of each of these cylinders, can we determine the ordered pair which represents the position of this point? And so that would be a, a very um, likely question that we'd ask when we start doing a position and displacement type analysis. And so there's our, our buckets. Now we come up from the bucket and there's a simple link right here. Uh, there's another simple link that's somewhat horizontal. And then we have another cylinder which connects in here, just like so. And so that cylinder being this one right here. And so we take a step back to, to look at our work. I think we've got most of the components in here. Um, and I believe our diagram is close to being complete there. Um, we have all the links, I believe, and we've got most of the joints in there as well. Yes, uh, there's one thing we'll have to watch out for as a caveat that I can already see with Grubler's equation. And so uh, now that you've got all the links represented on your kinematic diagram, uh, the first thing that I would suggest doing is numbering the links. And so one of the rules with numbering the links is you always start with a frame as one. And so I'll make that designation right here. Here's my frame one. One thing to notice is even though the frame has two connection points here, we've got two pin joints here, which are associated with connecting into the frame, there's going to be only one frame per mechanism. And so there's no need to call this one and then this grounded area two here, uh, the one covers both cases there. Uh, so then we can start numbering, numbering our other links. So here's link two. Here's link three, and so two and three are associated with one hydraulic cylinder. This will be link four here. We'll come up to this top cylinder that we've modeled, and it'll have links five and six. So five will be this simple link, six will be this slider here. Let's call seven this shaded link there. Eight and nine will be the cylinder here on the right-hand side. Let's call eight being the slider here, nine being the simple link. It's called 10 being this close to horizontal simple link. We've got 11 being this simple link. 
and let's say 12 is our bucket link. And so I believe that is all the links, and so we'll kind of keep records over here. That means n is equal to 12, or we represent the number of links with the, the variable n. Next thing we can do is letter the joints. And so here, I'll just start with this pin connection here. We have A for this pin connection or joint. We have B for this pin joint. Let's call C the sliding joint here. E being that pin joint. So here we have another actuator. So F will be the sliding portion of it. G we'll call the pin joint there. H for this pin joint. I for this pin joint. Let's call it J for the pin joint here. There we go, J. K for the sliding joint. Let's go L for this pin joint to the left. M for the pin joint here. N for the pin joint there. O for the pin joint here. And I'm missing a letter, actually. I think I forgot D in all this. A, B, C, yes, D, E, F, and so forth there. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Uh, usually you'd want to go in alphabetical order, but uh, here I'm going to have one that's a little bit off, uh, seeing as if you look at the red characters right here, I'm missing D. Um, but that's not a problem because I really need one more uh, joint in here as well. And so you might be saying, well, it looks like I've accounted for everything, uh, but we have one caveat that we have to remember with our Grubler's equation and how we letter the joints on the kinematic diagram, and that has to do with this connection right here, which is connecting links 9, 10, and 11. And so that connection is right here on the actual image. And so there you've got uh, this hydraulic cylinder, you've got this simple link here, and another simple link uh, before we get down to the bucket. And so in reality, you could pass one bolt, one pin, uh, through all three of those uh, components in order to have them pivot about and complete the mechanism. But just the way the math works out in uh, Grubler's equation and how you calculate mobility, um, by definition, a pin joint can only connect two different links. And so what that means here is that we're going to have one pin joint connecting links 9 and 10, and we need a second pin joint to connect links 10 and 11 at this given point. And so since I forgot D, I'll go ahead and place O comma D there. And so O comma D are the two pin joints associated with this point, this dot on my kinematic diagram. And again, one of them is going to connect length 9 and 10, and the other is going to connect links 10 and 11 there. This just ensures uh, that we have the correct number of joints when we go to calculate mobility. And so after recognizing that issue with Grubler's equation, I believe now we have a complete kinematic diagram. And so as we were doing our record keeping over here, um, I'll go ahead and put J sub P and J sub H, where these are the number of primary and higher order joints. And so higher order joints, um, they have some sort of combination of rotation as well as sliding happening. And so we've been talking about those in terms of cams and gears. And so just looking at the mechanism, there are no cams and gears here. And so we can put J sub H as equal to zero. The primary joints we've talked about are pin joints and sliding joints, which make up all of the joints of this kinematic diagram. And so we just need to count all of the red characters here for that value. And so I see 3 here, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 down here is 15. And so we've got a total of 15 primary joints which have been made up of pin joints or sliding joints there. And so now that we've got uh, those values identified, we can go straight into calculating mobility using Grubler's equation. And so that equation from our reference in our planar mechanisms that we're going to be dealing with is 3 times n minus 1 minus 2 times j sub p minus j sub h there. And so now that we've got all of those values already observed from the kinematic diagram, it's just a matter of plugging and chugging here. So we've got 3 times 12 minus 1 minus 2 times 15 minus 0 or 3 times 11 is 33 
minus 30 minus 0 gets us to a mobility of 3 for the mechanism. And so intuitively you should ask yourself, does that make sense with uh, the mechanism that I'm trying to analyze? And so in this case it does. Uh, mobility is representing the number of degrees of freedom of the mechanism. It's talking about how many independent inputs you need in order to precisely position all links on the mechanism. And so another way to look at that, on a, especially on an existing mechanism, is how many actuators are there, how many independent actuators. And so here on our kinematic diagram we have the three cylinders. We've got one here which is links two and three, one here which is links five and six, one here which is links eight and nine there. And so those are three independent actuators that we are seeing and that corresponds nicely with a mobility calculation equaling three there. And so that's a nice intuitive way to, to check, especially on existing mechanisms that you uh, see out and about and you are familiar with their workings in motion. I guess one other quick point um, on this kinematic diagram, uh, it's fairly crude. Um, you can even see all the lines aren't exactly straight just because I'm drawing on the graphics tablet. And so this diagram is good for uh, just doing this purpose, um, helping you get acquainted with them, uh, calculating mobility. But if I was going to use this and try to use it in order to uh, determine position analysis, velocity analysis, and so forth. I might want to be a little bit more careful, uh, making sure that I get uh, the diagram a little neater, and also I'd be interested in relating things a little better. And so I'd want to very well define how point E here is related to point A, and so that might involve uh, some variables representing different lengths on the length or excuse me, different lengths or different distances on a specific length. That's a little bit better, as well as the, the different angles in there as well. And so that's something we'll see as we move throughout the semester and more into our kinematic studies. And so thank you for watching this video, and hopefully it helps you in working your kinematic diagrams and basically coming up with this more simplified sketch of the mechanism from your more complex overall machine itself there. And so thank you again for watching the video.